Hey now, it is Friday the 13th. 13 is a good number, people. It is. 13 is a good number. I didn't say lucky. It's a good number. Um, My CD is completely sold out. Thank you for the wonderful response, everyone. Thank you so much. Will I reorder another 100? Yes, but not right away. And the main reason I'm not going to do it right away is because of COVID-19. We need to just hunker down, pay attention, um, protect ourselves, and just try and see this thing out, keep it from spreading. But there's, there's um, the ramifications on people's lives. It's just starting to unfold, especially the economic ones. And so the last thing that some people are going to be thinking about here in a little while is buying my CD, I bet you. You know, the economic impact besides the health impact, you know, it's uh, I think it's going to be staggering. So thank you for, um, for your support and... Um, and do if you make a video reviewing it leave me a link folks who have bought it and given me feedback already on facebook <clears throat> is good i like it i got a i got some musical gifts from arthur arthur lives in england he sends me good music it's a very kind man very kind man um I, apparently he heard me talking about Agnes O'Bell. So what does he do? He sends me her late night tales. This is part of a series, apparently, where artists um, put together uh, mixtapes. They include themselves along with other songs and pieces of music that are important to them. This is amazing. I've already listened to it. And uh, a couple things on this I've listened to a couple times. I mean, she's got her stuff on here, along with everyone from Henry Mancini to Can, to Ray Davies of the Kinks. I also like what she says in here. She talks about the fact that she likes the human voice more as a musical instrument and likes it when it presents itself more like that than just the words. Words are important, though. They are, people. But this is really good. And he also sent me something brand new, so I can give you a review of something brand new out of, um, I think this is based out of Scotland. This is Citizen Bravo, Raymond McDonald and Friends doing a tribute to Ivor Cutler. Return to YHUP. The world of Ivor Cutler. This is wonderful. Wow. I, uh, you know, I have Ivor Cutler, and you know, I get some of his humor. I'm not British, so some of it I don't quite understand, but his delivery and uh, his humor, of course, he's a treasure to England, you know, I mean, he influenced the Beatles, you know, but the musical quality to everyone's approach to his stuff on here, this is really good, this is really listenable. I found myself having to play over a couple of times, Pickle Your Knees, that song in particular. Arthur, I really appreciate this. It's, it's really good. Real, real good. Surprising how musical it was. Really good. I'm going to hang for a few minutes. Um, it's uh, in the morning. It's uh, a quarter to ten here in Omaha. The sun is shining now, but there's supposed to be a wet a winter storm come through tonight dumping snow that you know up to a couple of inches the weather is so strange so strange i'll show some more records because i have gone ahead and indulged myself um you know i'm looking at my books my financial books you know which have, i could afford to go and buy some more records that's what i've done since i was a little boy that's been, been my greatest um, monetary reward is buying records. And 
it's 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 probably a blessing that I'm in Omaha right now because there's a, only a limited amount of what I really want that I can find here, so I can't um, break myself. You know, I, I gave myself a limit, and I I, I I I reached that limit as to what I was willing to buy this month. I'm gonna wait now till next month. You know, unless something comes really cool. But I bought a few more records. I'll show those, but I'll also show last night um, as I was taking, well, here's one, Ping by Stereolab. As I was looking for um, these, because I haven't bought any new ones, any new plastics, I reuse them. I, I kind of, um, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, we'll put this, we'll take it off of this old album and put it on this one. So Stereolab Ping got Sunspot's old plastic. But while pulling it from my library collection, I thought to myself, I don't remember what this sound, sounds like, and I, I really like this cover. And this is one of those uh, library records, it turns out, that I love. It's got, this one is, um, it has these different moods, you know, and colorful, warm and relaxing, light and melodic novelty jaunty and carefree and um johnny hawksworth who's one of the composers on this particular one is really good at it. i have some favorite library music uh, composers he's one of them i mean just they they just are able to capture it with the music there's a particular mode there's a particular scale that i am realizing that i'm drawn to that some of these guys use and i'm realizing they're using it again and again and that this particular mode is one that's used a lot in movies. I don't know which one it is, but I love it. It's very colorful. Sunspots, the London Studio Group. So yeah, I, I showed that I had been needing to get this Stereolab album. It's one of the early ones, Ping, for my collection. And I love Stereolab and this is great. You can hear that it's early and on the raw side, but man, it's already, they've already got that groove and that sound already. That also reminds me of COVID-19. May 11th, as you, some of you know, I, my band In Dreama, we got hired to, we're supposed to be uh, opening up and playing with Damo Suzuki of Cannes. That same night, Stereolab is playing in Lincoln, which is an hour away here in Nebraska. I won't be surprised if both of those shows get canceled or postponed because of the health concerns. We shall see. If I wasn't playing with Damo that night, though, would I go see Stereo? Absolutely. It would be my, my fourth time. I've seen him three times. I've met Let Letitia Sadier, too. We've had a nice conversation. So I was able to uh, catch this. This is a record store day special that's been out for a while and I found it I found it marked down so I grabbed it um Mingus's Ah Um this is important this is an important album Fables of Phobos uh, particularly about racism Charles Mingus back when this was made this is late 50s early 60s 59 to, for an artist to speak out against racism as directly as he does on this album back then was 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 uh, revolutionary. Plus the fact that the music is so good. And it's a cool pressing on that kind of aqua looking uh, vinyl. I'm not particularly drawn with this. Um, I mean, that to me is cheap marketing to cut this out so you can see that it's a colored vinyl, but you you have damage this this graphic it's oh well been wanting this on vinyl for a long time because it's so good i've got the cd but heaven or las vegas by cocktail twins finally broke down and bought a copy played it all the way through last night just love this band so glad i got to see them live got to hang out with robin guthrie offered him a, a smoke in the car he wanted to but he said it was before the show you know if it was after he said he would have loved to have Cop the buzz. We had a good conversation. He hung out with me for about 10 minutes. And if you guys have met people who are in the business, you know that 
time is uh, is primary, you know. And so to be able to get that much time with someone who's on tour working, you know, I cherish those memories. Another classic 4AD that I've been waiting forever to get on vinyl. I've had it since it came out on CD. Dead Can Dance, Toward the Within. I posted this yesterday online, and and the the feeling is unanimous among listeners. This is a great live album. It's one of the great that people talk about Kiss Live and other band albums like that as being the greatest live album. This one never even gets talked about. This is, in my opinion, I agree with them. This is one of the greatest live albums I've ever heard. This is just makes your skin. Goosebumps. So intense. So, so personal. So wonderful. Toward the within. Dead can dance. Yeah, folks. I celebrated making money by spending money. And that's what we're supposed to do. It feels a lot better than just sitting on the money because you are afraid that, well, if I spend it, then I'm going to need it. Something's going to happen. I've been living like that for years. It sucks. This came out finally on vinyl. Deer Hoof's Holdy Paws. This is early on in their career. I love Deer Hoof. Greg Saunier, the drummer, is a Facebook friend, and we interact because he's very political or not political, he's very socially concerned, which makes us political. We care. Isn't that beautiful? That is nice. And this is early on. You can hear the band getting its sound together. This is for before Satoshi, Satomi, is that her name? Yeah, Satomi, this is her getting her on her feet as far as singing. There's quite a few spots on the album here where she goes um, sharp in her singing. She hasn't gotten control of her voice. I notice that really, really strong person. I don't know how people don't notice it. But other than that, this is really, really good. Deer hook, holy paws. Here's another one I got that I was like, yeah, I need to. I need some lilies, lilies on on vinyl. The original version of this on vinyl is pretty expensive. So I was glad to find this reissue of, um, what's the name of this one? It's an interesting title. Exame, Exame, the Photon Band. Exame or Exame, the Photon Band. Lilies. Psychedelic pop. This band is really amazing. It's like, it's an, another example of where it's not about the quality that makes people become known. This band is so much better than so many bands that are considered pop psych. Um, the guy that just died from Opal and Mazzy Star, Rain Parade. This is way better than Rain Parade. No, no diss to the guy that da died, but just thinking out loud, people always talk about Rain Parade being this classic psychedelic, a uh, modern psychedelic band uh, album. I said, that's bullshit. You haven't heard this. Lilies. XMA the Photon Band. It's badass. Wow. And here's one, finally. I finally have re... re I have finally replaced my high school copy, which got trashed so long ago. But I bought it when it first came out. Played it to death. Funkadelics. Funkadelic, free your mind and your ass will follow. I love this album. This is a repress, 180 gram, very nice pressing. People say uh, Maggot Brain is the best. I say there couldn't have been a Maggot Brain without a free your mind. This album is killer. Fantastic. I also like how, um, I don't like, I'm just commenting on how in order to get the black butt on the cover, they had to have her stand and make that ass as flat as possible. She couldn't bounce it out, you know what I'm saying? That would have been nice, huh? <laughs> Listen to me with my silly ass. <laughs> really happy to get that. I got, I got... So, yeah. A couple trips. 
couple trips. That was to Drastic and one more to Homer's because they had something that I'd been waiting to get because it, it was expensive. I'll show it. I said to myself, I'm going to get this, damn it. I want it. And it's for my can collection, Ermin Schmidt, Villa Wunderbar, a selection. 12 solo works and 19 soundtrack pieces curated by Vim Vendors. Vim Vendors is a filmmaker whose work I do rate and I do like, and I have a collection of Vim Wenders films on video. He used Can and um, Nick Drake, uh, Nick Cave, other people. This is fantastic. Four records. I have some of this on CD already, but Ermin Schmidt, the keyboardist um, from Can, great composer and musician. And this is, um, I didn't even realize until I opened it up that it was on clear vinyl. Oh man. This is fantastic. I mean, the quality and the scope of music on here is wide, but the quality is really high. Much of this is like modern classical music. This is. I'm so glad that I went. I broke down and bought this. It was worth every. It was worth it. It was. It wasn't cheap. Brand new. You know, I'm a dedicated love fan of the band Can, because of the music, not because of the legacy, but because of the actual music. I love it. So I'm, I bought this. This was marked down at Homer's where this had come in on a record store day and it didn't sell. I didn't even see it until yesterday. From, I think it's Sweden, Trad Grass Oxtenar, um, Tak for Kaffet. And this is dedicated to two members of the band who died shortly after this was completed in the early 2010s. This is a Lazy, Languid, and Stoned. It's like they're like stoned jams now there's an extra quality you can i can feel these people through the music there's something to be said about the alchemy of music because what they're doing i can do and i've heard a lot of other people do this sort of thing and it just gets boring but there's something happening between them that is that gets picked up through the music and i hear it and i feel it this is really good. I'll write these titles down in the descriptive box. Last thing I found was in the used section at Homer's. I had this shortly after it came out, sold it, and it's like I just didn't need to sell it, so I'm really glad that I was able to get it for 10 bucks. Godly and Cream's Consequences, the three record set where they, um, Quit 10cc to make this record to um, demonstrate the gizmo that they made for the guitar, that, that, uh, that, that, that item. This is really very good. The big, big narrative story involved, so... But the music, the, whoever bought this even kept the, um, kept the plastic from it. And look at the price, $3.99. Look at that. That tells, tells you a lot about, you know... The, the madness of times, the madness of materialism. I will, whenever I have a chance to talk about the madness of man, I will. Records used to cost two and three bucks. Now they cost 30 and 50 bucks for no good reason except inflation. That the bottom line is constant profit. A one-way street headed off of a cliff. It takes, it's, it's taking a pandemic for some of us to realize how insane we've been focused. Everything is focused on wage slavism. And now that we have something to deal with this pandemic that we can't control, a lot of people are freaking out because many, many people, large swaths of, of mankind are under the false impression and assumption. They, they don't even think about it. They just assume we're in control we're the we're smart we run the world no we don't we're not in control we don't control anything it's a that's an illusion you know i can just hear somebody watching who said would would love to argue with me about that i ain't gonna argue with your ass you just don't see it you're not in control we can't control this virus we have to respond to it 
and so it's forcing us to rethink a lot of stuff you know and it's a shame that long ago we put the gold before this before human interest and so we're having this big reset worldwide they say it's still about a year before we'll have a, a vaccine for it, you know, so. Social distancing and all this stuff, there's so many layers to it. Because of politics and, and opinions and stuff, you can look at it all kinds of ways. You can say that it's a plot to, dis it's another part of a plot. It could be, I don't know, but the one thing I do know is this, is that we're dealing with a virus that we don't control. And I'm paying attention to that. So people in social media who are talking like they know what they're talking about, people who are losing their shit because they're panicking, are the folks who are screaming out with stupid adolescent humor, trying to hide their fear. Others who are shaking their fists angrily because their businesses are suffering. Well, this is it. We're, we're not in control, people. And this is, uh, this is what we're dealing with because we, because the gold and material things are so, we're so captivated by them that we have not been able to rise above that and refocus on taking better care of one another. We need solidarity right now, people. We need to rise above this bullshit materialism and care about one another and life. 